Hello, this is a short introduction to a very exciting vision of our future, one full of hope and fantastic possibilities. Imagine, if you will, a future in which life is spread from our Earth into space. A future in which life, people, animals and plants are no longer confined to our one world. Where overpopulation and the degradation of Earth's natural environments are no longer a major threat. Where men and women live, work and play in space, and even raise their children there. A future in which the unlimited resources to be found in space are put to use for everyone's benefit to make life better for all of humankind. The first steps to making this imagination a reality might be to recapture the old tales of the pioneer, the explorer and the settler. Those people who were brave enough to go beyond the edge of what was thought possible, beyond the edge of the map that everyone else used. It has only been people such as these who have led our civilization to the heights it has reached today. It will only be such people who will take civilization onward and outward from our island home of Earth into the vast ocean of space. This may seem like a dream, but there are very real, detailed plans to make it happen. In 1929, the British scientist John Desmond Burnell proposed a new idea for a long-term habitat for people to live in space, called the Burnell Sphere. And during the 70s, a series of studies at Stanford University for permanent space settlements proposed a design referred to as Island One, which was very similar to the Bernal Sphere. This, according to the plan, was the first phase in building large-scale habitats in space. A scientist most associated with these ideas is Gerald O'Neill, whose book, The High Frontier, Human Colonies in Space, is a well-known description of how people might live in space. In his book, he shows how these habitats can be built with current technology and how they could benefit the whole of the Earth's population. A principal thesis of the High Frontier is that the onward progress of the human race will encompass the use of the enormous resources the settlement of space will put at our disposal. No more shackles of just what our beautiful home planet can provide. We, our children and future generations, can lead richer, better lives without spoiling the Earth as we have done. An initial incentive to settle in space and build space colonies such as the Burnell Sphere may be to have direct access to the effectively unlimited power of the Sun. Solar power beamed directly from stations in low Earth orbit could help our civilization overcome its addiction to fossil fuels and free us from some of the environmental and geopolitical problems we face today. A smaller version of the Burnell Sphere proposed by Gerald O'Neill is only around 500 metres in diameter and would be able to provide living and recreational space for a population of around 10,000 people, which is a huge increase in the space habitats that have been built to date. This might seem like a fantastic enterprise, to construct such a settlement in space, far larger than anything built to date. However, it does not require any new or exotic materials to be created. Although the diameter of 500 metres is large, it must be remembered that the International Space Station, the largest space habitat constructed to date, is itself roughly 100 metres across. Much of the material used to build the Island One could be transferred from the surface of the Moon, or alternatively from near-Earth objects and asteroids. This material could also be used to shield the habitat area from cosmic rays. So, what of the inhabitants of the Island One settlement? They would live very much like the people of Earth, sleeping, working, playing, and relaxing with their friends and families. The whole settlement rotates at a little under two revolutions per minute, providing a force that acts as a substitute for gravity. At the equator of the habitat sphere, the force derived from this rotation is equivalent to the force of gravity experienced on the surface of Earth. Away from the equator, this force tapers off to zero, meaning that around the poles, it will be possible for the residents of the sphere to enjoy microgravity sports or even human-powered flight. Moving away from the central sphere, we find the outer rings, which contain the layered agricultural areas used for growing plants and animal food. Large mirrors are in place around the habitation sphere to reflect the sun's energy to provide natural light and abundant energy. Radiation panels at either end of the structure will prevent overheating and the area here can also provide for large workshops for the settlement's industrial activity, including the docking and transport stations. The Island One space habitat will be constructed in space either in Earth orbit or alternatively at one of the Lagrange points between the Earth and Moon where gravity is effectively balanced out by the competing gravitational pull of each of those planetary objects. The advantage of that would be that almost no energy would be required to keep the settlement in place 
were it to be positioned in one of these libration points of the Earth-Moon system. Establishing a large settlement like this in space would be a resounding confirmation that life from Earth was no longer restricted to just the one world. Like the Apollo moon landings, it would be an extraordinary and ambitious leap into a new world of thoughts and feelings about our place in the universe. Instead of being limited to our current narrow and restricted cultural concerns, we could, like the great trailblazers, explorers and scientists of the past, be reaching out to fantastic new horizons and break free from our outdated preconceptions. More practically, the human population of Earth is still growing, and by the middle of the 21st century, is projected to be around 9 billion. Life on our home planet is already threatened by our burgeoning numbers. A great increase in human population in the coming years will surely make that worse. Instead, the enormous resources to be found in space can be put to use for the benefit of humanity to give everyone the chance to enjoy a good life and ensure the natural beauty of Earth can continue to inspire and delight generations to come. The Island One space settlement is the first step towards the large-scale radiation of life from Earth into space. With humanity no longer confined to one world, we are much less likely to be vulnerable to catastrophes, whether they be natural or of human origin, such as nuclear war. We may well assure life some security in the cosmos that it did not have before. This early space settlement would hopefully be only the start of the settlement of space. The resources available in space include an enormous amount of water in the form of ice to be found in the asteroid belt. This could allow for an extraordinary expansion of the human population from the billions of today, ultimately to trillions spread throughout the solar system. After this beginning, life may one day spread to the stars and we would be responsible for it. The human race would be bringing life to an otherwise seemingly dead cosmos. A wonderful role for us to play in the continued evolution of the universe.